Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Olian and we're going to be looking at how to recreate the bass sound from Bruno Mars's Finesse, which is a cool funky bass sound. And so this is basically a, a sound design or synthesis tutorial and we're going to be looking at how to recreate it in any synthesizer, so a general approach to this kind of sound. And I'm going to be using the using the free plugin Helm, which is a cool synthesizer which you can grab for free. I'm going to put the link in the description if you follow want to follow along and recreate it in that very same synthesizer. But we're going to be using functions which you have pretty much in every synthesizer really. So if you feel like following along in the synthesizer of your choice, um, that also makes a lot of sense since you're going to be able to check if you really get all of your or if you get understand those basic functions of your synthesizer because then you're going to be able to recreate it in your own thing and then you can compare it and this kind of stuff and I feel like it makes a lot of sense if you really want to learn sound design and understand your plugin basically translating one preset or one approach into another synthesizer where it works slightly different but has kind of the basic same functions Anyway, let's open up Helm. Um, I'm going to pre uh, preview this the sound itself in a second because obviously you want to listen to it first because before you sit through a whole tutorial having uh, to figure it out and then just to realize in the end that the sound kind of sucks. So you can make that decision in the beginning. But let me just say something up front. Obviously, if you listen to the original, um, the bass sound we're going to do here is going to sound very different, not only because they already mastered and mixed it and made it sound amazing, but also because the keyboard players and the bass players and the synthesizer they used are just all top notch. So we're not going to be able to um, compete with that, or at least I am not, but the basic approach is still the same. And then second of all, uh, well, not second of all, but just another reason is that um, in the song, the bass is kind of buried below a lot of other sounds. Like there is a piano in there. They have like other kinds of sounds. So in total, it obviously sounds different than now having some of my shitty drums, which I just programmed real quick to have a kind of beat going and then kind of the bass being very naked on there. But this is a sound design tutorial. So let's not get too caught up in these little technicalities. Anyway, so here we go. I'm going to turn down the mic for a second so the keys don't bother us too much. So yeah, the bass sounds something like that. I was kind of trying to play it decently, but um, doesn't always work out that perfectly. Anyway, um, let me just pause real quick. So this is the synthesizer I was talking about, Helm, and it's kind of a nice uh, overview you can have here because you see all the different features and you have like visual envelopes and this kind of stuff. But let's just jump right in and create this patch from scratch. Um, how do you actually initialize? I'm just going to go back and forth. Or actually, I'm just going to open a new instance because I actually have to do my homework and check out how you do this, uh, how you can initialize Helm. Probably it's pretty easy, but since I'm in, in the middle of a video right now, um, I'm not going to yeah, do that. So now we have an initialized patch. And um, so we're going to get started. The basic approach to this is having two oscillators, which both uh, play a sawtooth wave, but one octave apart, and then running that through a filter which then gets modulated to kind of create a filter sweep, which sweeps down over time, which you can really hear in the patch in the, in the Bruno Mars track. And, um, and then basically the last thing that you need is uh, the legato mode in order to create like these smooth, um, let's say slides and this kind of stuff to get the playing sound or like the technique that they are applying in the original. So anyway, these guys over here are the oscillators and Helm, and the oscillators are what create the basic building block of the sound which we're using. And all of these different waveforms, which you can choose in here, um, contain a certain set of frequencies. And you can then alter these frequencies by using a filter and cutting out some frequencies on the top or on the bottom and this kind of stuff. So a sawtooth wave is a, is a cool waveform. 
um, which I'm going to go into depth in some of the coming videos. But for now, let's just choose it the way it is. And we're going to be pitching it one octave apart. So we have one oscillator. We're going to leave it the way it is. Then we have this second oscillator over here. OK, I didn't want to do that. No, 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 back, back. So here we go. OK, that's now in reverse. So let me just go here. Anyway, good. Since I haven't been using Helm that much, I'm still needing a bit, still a bit shaky on the features, but I'm sure we can manage. So here you can transpose it by semitones, and one octave contains 12 semitones. So in order to pitch it one octave up, we're going to put this to 12. Now we have two sawtooth waves, but one octave apart. I'm actually going to turn down the volume so it's not too loud when I test it out. And it sounds like this, basically. This is already the basic building block of the sound which we're going to create. Then over here, we have the mixer where we can decide how loud we want to play each um, waveform. And um, which I initially realized is that it sounds very deep, the bass, a bit deeper than the stuff here, but we're going to fine tune this later. But I'm already going to turn the oscillator 2 down by a bit um, to have a starting point. Um, so what we have to do now is set up a filter. And um, you use the filter over here and you have to click this little on button. So now we're kind of, this filter is kind of, if this is the frequency spectrum, you're cutting away everything that's on uh, on top of here, almost like in an EQ or any other filter, probably, you probably already know by now what this is. And um, so in Helm, you set the, the cutoff frequency here, which you can also nicely see visually, and you set the resonance here. So we can play around with that later when we decide how to set it. But in general, the bass sounded pretty deep, so we're going to bring it down. And what we're going to do now is already set up the envelope for the filter. And you can see the filter envelope down here. And what the envelope basically does is it, it changes the filter placement over time. So the basic approach is the following. If you have the two waveforms combined and they give you this building block of uh, frequencies, what you want to do is you want to cut away some high frequencies over time in order to kind of emulate what a bass does. Because if you play a bass, um, you start out with a bunch of high frequencies and then, or and also low frequencies, but then the high frequencies disappear more quickly than the deep frequencies. So you kind of have an effect, almost like a filter is kind of, you're starting out with more uh, high stuff and then the filter is kind of taking away the high stuff and you just end up with the low frequencies. And you could technically just use your mouse and like move the filter down over time. But since you want to use your hands for other stuff and kind of automate this kind of um, stuff, um, you use an envelope to do it. And the envelope um, does exactly that. So it kind of has four stages which you can use in order to shape the filter movement. And the basic idea is the following, that the filter starts on the point where you set it, so at the cutoff frequency, and then it rises up to a point which you decide by setting the envelope depth, which you can find over here. So that tells you how far this envelope is going to move the filter. Um, so we can set this to a certain value to say like, okay, let's just go, go up this high. And so the filter goes up to the envelope uh, depth, then it starts moving downwards and it kind of, you kind of set the tempo by setting the decay time because then you decide how much time it needs to fall down to the sustain level, which is the next level, which you set. So what the decay time does is, or basically you say you set the level where you want to start with the filter. You want to set the level where you go with the filter. And then you set the level where the filter stays as long as you press a key. And then what the decay time does is it tells you how much time does the filter need to move down to the sustain level. When you then let the key go, the filter starts falling down all the way back to the point which you set, which is controlled by the release time. So once you let go of a key, it tells you, uh, the release time will tell you how long does it take for the filter to fall back to the level, to the initial cutoff level, which we set. Then I kind of skipped one stage, which is the attack time. And the attack time t tells you how long does it take for the filter to move from the cutoff frequency up to 
the point which you set by setting the envelope depth. So you kind of have this movement of the filter going up and going down again with the two different with a few different stages in there, as in like how much time do we need to get up here and how high is that by setting the envelope depth? Then how much time does it take to fall down to the sustain level, which you set with the S. So it's a, a level in this case, another time. And then you have release time as in how long does it take to fall down back to the cutoff level. So that was a slightly longer explanation, but if you guys are new to sound design and synthesis, um, probably relatively helpful. One of the cool things in Helm is that you can just set it um, right here visually. So you can either slide around these sliders over here or you can just grab this point over here and kind of play around with that, which is in a way cool because you can, which is one click control, um, three different things. So everything besides the attack time, basically, you can set the decay time, you can set the level and you can also set the release time in a way. No, actually it's just two, my bad. So it's sustain and decay, and then you can control attack and release individually. Um, Cool. Then we have this amp envelope over here, which works the same way as the filter envelope, but it doesn't control the movement of the filter, but kind of the, the amplitude or volume of the sound itself over time. So imagine you have your, uh, your waveforms always running, but then there is a gate on top, which opens up when you start pressing the key and then you let your waveforms through. And then depending on how you set your ADSR for the amplitude envelope, they kind of change the volume over time. So once again, the attack decides how quickly does the, how much time does it take the volume to get to the maximum level, then the decay time, how much time does it take to fall down to the sustain level. With the sustain level you set, how much volume is or amplitude is coming out once while you're holding a key. And once the it, decay time is over, then the release time is controlling how um yeah how much time it takes for the for the sound to go back to zero once you let go of a key and we're not going to worry too much about the amp, amp envelope in this point because we're just going to leave it as it is and just make sure that it has a bit of attack and a bit of release so we don't jump from zero to a hundred which would cause a click to happen so you kind of prevent that by giving it a bit of attack and a bit of uh, release time so um, that's the basic setup. And the last thing we need is the legato. Um, and what legato does, it controls the envelopes in a way that tells you, hey, if you press down one key and then another one, instead of starting the envelopes over and doing this whole trick of moving the filter up and down again, um, they just stay exactly at the point where they are in time of those envelopes. So it's the filter envelope as well as the amp envelope. But in order to really use this effect, we have to change the voices to one because otherwise, um, in this case, and also in other synthesizers, you just get a fresh, you use a fresh voice in order to just go through the envelope again. So if you set this um, to kind of to mono in a way, not mono, but if you set it to uh, one voice only, um, yeah, which is, I think is actually mono, just not r r uh, uh, um, talking about stereo. So um, yeah, if you set it to just one voice, um, monophonic, then you can get the effect. So anyway, this was a lot of talking. Let's actually jump and start fine tuning the patch in order to create the bass that we want. Um, so we started with some initial presets here and we're working with this sound right now. So right now there's quite a lot of high frequencies. So we're going to bring down So you really hear the filter moving down and we want that, but maybe not as much. So we're going to bring down the sustain level and down the decay time. Now this like kind of vocally sound comes from the resonance which we set, which kind of boosts a certain point 
or boost the point where the cutoff uh, is. So once you move the filter, you kind of get a boost along the way, which gives you like this sweeping sound. And we don't want that much of this. Bit more drive, so we get some more volume in here. So now I'm fine-tuning the mixer over here and deciding how much of the oscillator 2 we want to have. Um, I'm going to make a video after this uh, about the um, music theory and the, the notes in the, in the song itself and in the different parts so if you want to watch that one make sure to subscribe but for now we're just going to focus on the on the sound design again one thing that i forgot to mention is that there's something called re-trigger um in some synthesizers for example in silence and um what they do is they kind of decide uh, this feature decides um if you start a waveform over every time you press a key and or if you um, just want to have a waveform running wild and you just open up the gate at, and you just get the sound at whatever point um, this uh, the waveform is in time. It's a bit complicated and maybe not, I'm not going to be able to perfectly explain it in this video, but what, what's happening is that here uh, in, 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 in Helm, you automatically have retrick uh, turned off. So I, there's nothing I have to do at this point. I know that in silence you um, initially have this a setup where the retrick of these oscillators is on. Um, so that's something you have to change. In massive, I know that um, you actually have to turn on the retrick. So initially it's turned off, and it kind of does a lot to the sound. And in this case, we want to have the retrick off. And um, if you're using any other kind of synthesizer and you're not sure, you can look it up real quick and kind of research this topic. Uh, but if you don't nece not necessarily understand enough of that yet, you can also post in the comments which um, synthesizer you're using. And I'm just going to take a quick look at the manual and then I can help you out with that. But then make sure to subscribe and like this video because <laughs> it's a bit more work for me anyway, which is not a big deal, but you know, anyway. So I think we're already getting kind of close. Let's give it a quick listen here. Huh? So that already sounds okay, and now we could fine tune it until we really get the sound that we want. Maybe a bit more uh, resonance, maybe slightly even lower sustain level, or maybe something like that. A bit more decay time to hear the sweep for a bit longer. That sounds okay. Maybe a bit less decay time, a bit more here. So now you can basically switch around between changing the volume of the two different oscillators, uh, changing the ADSR of the filter, also changing the ADSR of the amplitude if that's what you feel like, changing the cutoff frequency, changing the resonance, changing the envelope depth, and, and yeah. Maybe because I went over this a bit quickly, I can show you the legato again, um, or explain it one more time. So when I press a key, we get all these high frequencies in there because we set the filter to go up and then come down. Um, when I press a key and hold it, and then I press another one, instead of the filter starting back at zero and going up and going down again, um, the filter will just stay exactly at the point where it is in time of our envelope and just keep the movement. So if you press down the key for a pretty long time um, and it already reached the sustain level, it's kind of gonna gonna park at the sustain level. So let me show you what I mean. So we press one key, we press another key. It basically stays this, uh, the envelope starts over. But if we press a key and while we're holding down the other one, 
we're pressing another one and it's gonna not restart the envelope. So here we go. I think you heard that in case you're listening on bad speakers, maybe a bit higher up. And you can do these, do this to like create different kinds of sounds instead of doing like So you can kind of use this technique in your fingers to decide how you want to accent certain notes. And what you can also use this for is these cool slides that they do sometimes like. Maybe I turn down the mic for a second so you don't hear my keys that loud. That should be enough. <laughs> I'm not that good at this yet, but I'm working out uh, the playing style as well because I'm not a piano player or keyboardist and I'm working all of this stuff out. So that's basically it from my side. If you have any questions or I forgot to go over something, uh, please let me know. I hope you enjoyed the video. And um, if, if, yeah, like I said, I can just repeat myself. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments or also on Facebook if you prefer. Um, obviously, if you feel like liking and subscribing, you're more than welcome to do that. If you feel like sharing this with a friend, that will probably would help me out the most because then you get a few, few more people interested. And if this is maybe interesting to someone you know, feel free to send it over to them. Um, I would appreciate that a lot. Um, yeah, maybe a second about myself. I'm a... Um, I'm kind of learning music production and teaching stuff myself and I like to learn by listening to other songs and working stuff out like in this case this Bruno Mars track and I'm gonna be trying to work uh, out the music uh, music theory behind it and some of the playing and maybe also the drums and they have a cool piano and organ sound in there which I'm gonna be working on in the coming days and whenever I figure something out I'm gonna share it in a video for you guys to also work this kind of stuff out um yeah quite a long video but um i hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and i hope to see you soon peace